Hello YouTube, Mr. Evans here with my vlog number 105. Today is Monday and the time is currently 7 o'clock, well 7.05. Um, uh, here a little later than I need to need to be, but um, I have a good excuse. It didn't start until, it didn't start grading until pretty late. Um, and that's because today was Anime Club, which I think I'll talk about a little bit later in the video. Um, now, on today's vlog, uh, I am going to get a little specific. Not specific with students, though. I just don't need to. Specific with what I did during the day, which is something I've sort of been trending away from doing, just because I feel like it just becomes me talking about the school day just in general, um, rather than focusing on one specific theme. But today what I did, I think, really had me thinking about uh, today's theme. Uh, so, but before I jump into that, let me share the wonder quote of the day. Um, and let me also say that I said I'd get specific about today. Today was a very good day. I'm very pleased with how well today went. Um, yeah. So even though I'm going to get a little specific, I'm not going to get specific about students. And I don't really have too much to say other than positive things about today. So. Uh, should be good, should be fine. Uh, but let me share the wonder quote of the day and then we'll just jump right in. Today's wonder quote of the day is, we all have the same roots and we are all branches of the same tree. Which is beautiful. It's also from Avatar The Last Airbender, which is uh, cool because it's a great show. Um, and that being the case, you know, the fact that we really are all branches of the same tree, you know, we all have... Uh, different interests and different ideas about things, but at our core, we sort of have the same uh, basic needs. And uh, I think even though today was not remarkable by any means, I am very pleased with how well it went because of that. So let me just jump right in here and tell you what I did today. Today was vocabulary day, which we played Quizlet Live. Um, but today I made a point of telling them Stand up, walk around, find your team. Uh, of course, a lot of classes still, you know, a lot of people didn't do it. They just don't like standing up for whatever reason. Um, but, you know, what I said to them was, I know you're, I mean, I said that to, I actually said it to every class. At the beginning of the day, I said, I know you're tired. It's before, mo before noon. Um, you're not completely awake yet. And after, after that, in the afternoon classes, I realized, yeah, you know, they're going to be tired too because it's the end of the day almost. I said, I know it's nearing the end of the day, you're tired. Um, but then I said, but I'm standing up and walking around so you can too. Um, so they got up and walked around, uh, did not have 100% of students doing that, not even really half, but uh, that's okay, it doesn't really matter because uh, they were able to get together with their teams. Um, and I really like that Quizlet Live is a team game. Um, individual accountability, but group goal, you know, that's sort of how, how teamwork works. Um, and then afterwards, we just sort of talked. Uh, with my fours, they uh, have, you know, we're studying the environment right now, and so I showed them a couple videos of endangered species. I showed them the, two, the shoebill stork, which I just found out about a few months ago, and it blew my mind. If you haven't seen a shoebill stork, like, Google it right now. Well, maybe don't Google it right now. Wait till this video's done. Then, don't even Google it. Go onto YouTube and search for shoebill storks because, wow. Um, and also lyrebirds, um, which the thing about them is that they can almost perfectly mimic just about any sound they hear. Uh, well, maybe not just about any sound, but a lot of sounds. Um, they can whistle, they can sound like a kookaburra, they can sound like a chainsaw, they can sound like a camera. It's really cool. Um, and both of those species are, they're watching it to make sure because its population is decreasing and so they're worried that they may go extinct. And so I showed them the videos and I said, you know, if we're not careful with our planet, then this is, uh, you know, we might lose the opportunity to see these kind of species. And um, then it had just sort of occurred to me, I think even like this morning, I was like, if there's time at the end, I really should pull in Google AR which is something I found out about at my Google Educator training. Uh, so I did do that with uh, my ELD4s. Um, I used my Chromecast to be able to show the screen on my phone, and then I used Google AR with my phone, and they liked it a lot. 
uh, which is always great, you know. Um, same thing with uh, the, well, you know, with the, EL, the, the afternoon classes, the ELD3s, we're reading about a book that's not about animals. Uh, well, not a book, it's not about a story. Um, it's about uh, the Lost Boys of Sudan. But I really wanted to find a way to bring in the, uh, the, the Google AR again, and you, it has to be animals for that. And I was like, well, what can I do with that? And I realized, you know something? They actually are relevant to the Lost Boys of Sudan because, you know, they don't have a home. They're out there wandering around Sudan, which, you know, there's uh, leopards and cheetahs and all sorts of stuff. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to do Google AR and I'm going to show uh, my students what it would be like to have one of them in the classroom right now. Which, you know, I'm probably telling you something that you don't know. So let me show you Google AR. Um, I have to kind of get out of my uh, seat here, but if you go onto the uh, Google app on your phone um, and you search for animals, with some of the animals, although not all of them, you have the option to meet a life-size one of those animals up close. So uh, I did view in 3D for the tiger. Which, this just already, this manipulable 3D model of a tiger is pretty cool, but then you put view in your space. I'm going to pick you up so I can really show you here. Um, what you do is you kind of point it at the ground, and then it actually, uh, like, kind of comes to life within your space. You can sort of move it around. Um, and so all the students could, you know, see themselves here, and I could put it, like, put the tiger by me, <laughs> you know? So that's really fun. Um... And that was how I ended class. Yeah, let me make sure that you're all balanced. There we go. But why do this? Why not just have them read? Why not just have them study vocabulary? Why do things like show videos? Why pull up um, an AR model in the classroom? What's the point? Um, and I think that immediately what most teachers would say is engagement. It's so much more engaging to be able to do that. And that's true, but I was thinking about um, my Kagan brain-friendly teaching workshop that I went to last year. And I realized I think there's more going on here. There are some principles of brain-friendly teaching. Uh, some of them I did not attend to today, like safety, for example, I just didn't really attend to. The principles, though, I'll just go ahead and tell you what they are now. They are safety, nourishment, social interaction, emotion, and attention. And by attention, what I believe they're referring to is um, just, you know, um, like what kind of attention are they going to pay? Um, how are they going to process the information? And so... With that Quizlet Live game, people would say, this is engaging, but there's more to it than that. There's also nourishment. Um, nourishment, you know, being, if you're just sitting down the whole time, it's not just that your legs get stiff, your body is, like, deprived of oxygen. And so, I, I'm not always able to do it, and I'm not as good at doing it as I'd like to be, but I think that there is something to finding ways to get the kids uh, standing up and moving around. Um, and so that's why I was so insistent on it. Of course, some students are tired, they don't want to do it for whatever reason, which is really too bad because if they were to stand up and walk around, then they probably would find themselves to be less tired, especially at the end of the day. So that's part of it, as well as social interaction. Um, what does it say here? Brains are more engaged during social interaction than when listening. So. That's another big thing. Um, that's the re those, are, those are the two basic reasons that I really like uh, to do Quizlet Live. It's not just that it's engaging, it's that it's nourishing the body and it's getting them to interact socially. Um, there's also, oh, and, and of course also emotion, let's not forget, because if you win or if you lose, either way you have this powerful, hopefully powerful, emotional um, remembrance tied to that experience. So it's not just, um, okay, I remember my vocabulary words. It's, oh, I remember that this is the word that helped my team win. See? 
Um, and then afterwards, doing the, the AR thing, I think that really attends to information processing or, you know, attention. Um, as well as emotion. Again, you may look at that and go, like, why is that even relevant? Why, why show them a virtual tiger? What does that teach them? It's not so much about teaching them anything. It's about taking that experience, you know, and making it um, more easy to access uh, information-wise. Um, because it's very novel. This is something that most students haven't seen. If they had seen it a lot and it was just commonplace, then this would pretty much be a useless uh, part of the experience. But the fact that many of them hadn't really seen uh, virtual reality before, and that, that the fact that I got to pull it up makes it so much more likely that what I was talking about um, in order to show that to them will stick in their mind. Also emotion, you know, it made a lot of them happy. They're like, oh, put the, put the tiger over next to me, put the leopard over next to me. Um, and, you know, like, hey, don't put it, is it, ah, there's a tiger on my desk. Uh, a couple of kids tried to, like, prank me by, by leaving the room, which was... Oh, it's funny, just, ah, I'm scared of the leopard, I'm gonna leave. Um, but they didn't, it was okay. So, uh, yeah, the fact that there's that emotional tie to that experience makes it so much more powerful and so much more likely to stick in their minds. Um, so, yeah, as much as possible, I, oh, and I'd say there's, there's one more thing. When which, you know, Kagan doesn't mention this, which is uh, investment. The way I try to do it is I try to make this stuff relevant to them so that they're more likely to invest. So it's not just, okay, we're reading about uh, environmental conservation. It's we're reading about something that might be helpful for that cool video that we watched of that cool bird. I want to protect it. Let me read and find out about it. And of course, it doesn't appear to them in exactly that way. But getting them engaged and getting them interested makes it, I think, more likely that they will um, glom onto this content. And even if they don't glom onto it, even if they don't make it their own and go, yes, this content is great, it's at least more likely that they don't shrug it off. That they don't just say, this is not relevant to me, I'm going to read the words and not understand them. Um, at least I have hopefully communicated to them that this stuff is important because the more likely uh, the more they feel that they're reading about something that actually matters, the more likely it is that they're going to actually dive deeply into that content and try to engage with it. So that's the hope, and that's what it's all about. It's not just engagement. That's the title of the vlog. It's not just engagement. There's more going on here. YouTube, the time is now 7.19. Wow, I have been talking for 13 minutes. Oh, man, I am so sorry. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog right there. You have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye, YouTube.